I'm Dr. David Johnson, Professor of Medicine and Chief of Gastroenterology in Eastern Virginia Medical School in Norfolk, Virginia. Well, there's been very recent national media attention focused on the drug class of glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 agonists. These are drugs that are used to treat diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and weight loss. And well, the focus has been on the GI side effects of nausea, vomiting, and gastroparetic-like symptoms. I wanted to emphasize two key points that really are important to recognize for today's discussion. Number one, clinicians providing this class of therapy needs to be need to be increasingly aware of this potential side effect and, and certainly asking their patients and forewarning them when they start to prescribe these medications. And number two, to highlight with you the most recent recommendations by the American Society of Anesthesiology, which have just focused on preoperative assessment in patients undergoing uh, surgery, or this would include endoscopic procedures, whereby anesthesia was going to be delivered. So this is something that really needs to be uh, understood better. Let's focus on what is the drug class. First of all, this is a drug which is a derivative that increases insulin secretion and decreases glucagon release, both of which mediate glycemic control, in particular postprandially. On a GI level, it changes the gastric motility by slowing the, the motility by through decreased peristalsis and increasing tonic uh, contractility of the, of the pylorus, essentially a gastric outlet type of uh, obstruction type pattern. But nonetheless, this is something that has been studied by Dr. Michael Camilleri and uh, in a small study that uh, was done at the Mayo Clinic, they looked at a, a pilot study of liraglutide, which is sexenda, and they showed that there was a diminution in gastric emptying over the 16 weeks of the study. This is a placebo controlled in patients that were overweight, but nonetheless, there was a diminution over time, but significantly protracted even at the 16 weeks. So there may be a tachyphylaxis, so uh, we, waning of effect of the impact, but we just don't know when patients stop it for good, if they have significant side effects, if it persists. And there are some reports of patients having out a year or more where they're having protracted symptoms even though they've stopped their medications. So what are these drugs? Well, the drugs for weight loss include uh, liraglutide or sexenda, uh, semaglutide, which is Wegovy. Uh, there are drugs that are type two diabetes medications, not to be exclusive in the list, but these would include semaglutide or Zempic, uh, Trulicity, which is dulaglutide, Bieta, which is xenotide. These are drugs, again, that would be commonly re reviewed when patients are going through procedures. We need to be better aware as we start to see these patients for uh, endoscopy in, in particular. Now, what does this mean? From the standpoint of the endoscopist, in, in particular, anybody that's going to have uh, procedure or surgery, the ASA uh, recommendations now are the patients that, that are on these medications, they can be taken injection-wise once a week or daily. So the day prior to the procedure, the patients that are taking daily dosing, the recommendation is to consider holding these agents uh, and if, on the day of the procedure. And for patients that are on a weekly basis, consider holding that, that dose a week before. And this is really important to recognize if you do that, then it should be in consultation with their diabetologist to make sure that there may be some need for a bridging therapy to avoid hyperglycemia. On the day of the procedure, if GI symptoms such as severe nausea, vomiting, retching, abdominal pain, bloating, those things are present, consider delaying the, that elective procedure and discuss the risks of the potential risks of aspiration in this particular patient. If the patient has no symptoms and the GLP-1 agonist has been held as advised, then you should proceed as advised and proceed as usual. But if the patient has no symptoms and has not held their, their GLP-1 agonist, you should proceed with what the anesthesiologist call the full stomach precaution that considers uh, you potentially a high risk for aspiration. There's a way of checking for that. Some centers can do a quick ultrasound in the stomach and see if there's food debris or liquid, and they could proceed, and proceed at that point uh, knowing that that is not the case. There's no delay. Uh, but if there is not that provision, then you manage that accordingly. This may require intubation and, and certainly or delay of the procedure or, or postponing the procedure for another day. So again, these are things that are new. They changed in the, our world as gastroenterologists, uh, something that we should be considering very strongly. Again, mitigating strategies to protect the patient in these wonderful class of therapy. Sometimes they can have significant side effects that uh, we need to at least be aware of. So. Nothing is perfect. Caveat emptor. Let the buyer be aware, but let us be better informed. I'm Dr. David Johnson. Thanks again for listening.